Getting the Dutch perspective. The world according to Dutch. And now your host, Dutch Coleman. A dedication to all the refugees worldwide. One time. Say, say, say. I remember when we used to sit. Oh, in the government yard in Brooklyn. Oh, man. One of my favorite songs of all time. I'm telling you, man, the Fugees. If you don't know anything about the Fugees, go check them out, man. That's a great group. Lauren Hill, the headliner, obviously. Wyclef, Proz. I mean, I, I, I love them. It takes me back to a time as a lad, a young lad, enjoying music. I can't say that I enjoy the, the hip-hop stuff that's going on today. There's a few good things out there, but uh, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to stop there before I, before I get on my high horse and start destroying the work of these young folks out here today that I probably just don't understand. <laughs> so that being said, speaking of young folks, man, I want to transition into this, uh, the post game stuff, the aftermath, the Cam Newton stuff, the elephant in the room. I've been all over Twitter with it, dealing with what I've determined to be straight nonsense. Now, don't get me wrong. The nonsense started with Cam Newton and his ineffective way of dealing with the post-game press conference for Super Bowl 50, the biggest game of your career. And you're talking about a guy who's been a lightning rod, a polarizing figure from day one. You should have known that this is what you're going to get if you respond in this fashion. Now, to set it up, obviously, after the game, the uh, players obviously have media responsibilities. And, of course, if you're the starting quarterback for either team, you have media responsibilities regardless of what happens. They want to talk to you. They, you're, not, you're not the second string corner. You're not the nickel. You're not the, uh, some, some backup D lineman. I mean, you're not even the starting running back. You're the quarterback of the team that's in the Super Bowl. That, that trumps almost any position or any position on the field. But even if the better player is another position, the quarterback most likely is still always going to have those media responsibilities. So this was not a shock. Now, the shock may have been that they lost. (laughs) That that was a shock to him. But the fact of the matter is you knew that you had these media responsibilities. So now this is this is where I come in and I call nonsense on the other side because he didn't do a good job. He was asked questions, and, and some of the questions were silly, uh, and I think they were beginning to be silly. And, and, and uh, beside the fact, you have a responsibility. You've been, you put yourself in the spotlight. Now, now so, okay, let me, let me give you some more background. We're talking about Cam Newton, a person who's, who's loved the spotlight, who's enjoyed the spotlight, who's entertained us tremendously, wildly. And, and I, I enjoyed every minute of it uh, because I don't mind celebrating when a touchdown happened. I hate celebrating with guys who aren't that good. I, I'm, I'm, I hearken back to, to, to the Freddie Mitchells of the world. Uh, gives himself nicknames for, for absolutely nothing. You know, I, I hate that. Uh, a guy who, who makes a tackle 15 yards downfield on third and 10 because you had a big hit. You got, the guy got the first down. What are, you, what are you celebrating for? The guy got the first down. You know what? If you did put him out, someone else is coming in. But the drive is still happening. So thank you for nothing, Mr. Uh, get a good hit uh, 20 yards downfield. I don't like that guy. But I don't mind the guy who celebrates after he scored a touchdown, especially when the fans love it, especially when you're giving a football to a kid, especially when you're at home and you're winning and you're trying to sell a product that is the National Football League. I get all that. I'm okay with that. Now, there is a line that could be drawn. Some people say the length. I'm not even going to get into, into why and what and who Cam is and why people don't like him and all that. I'm not going to go there. But the fact of the matter is you enjoyed the limelight. You used it for what you could use it for. You got nice endorsements. I love your Beats, your beats commercial. You use it for all it's worth. Now, you're lost. So what happens now? Well, what do you think happens now? They want to see you squirm. They want to see your pain. They want to see possible tears. They want to see you broken. Now, how are you going to respond? Are you going to be broken? Which is fine. If you're broken, that's fine. I I never prepared for such a big game in my life, so I don't know what that broken feeling is related to sports on that level. So maybe you are broken. 
Maybe you're not. Maybe you don't care. Whatever it is, you're going to answer the questions. Now, how long you answer the questions? The NFL has a designated time. They have to be there. You have to answer the questions. We all know that famous, famous beast mode, Marshawn Lynch. Shout out to Marshawn Lynch again. Great running back, retiring, supposedly. Put all the, all the indications out on Twitter. All the talking chatters about him leaving. So shout out to, to beast mode. Now, we saw what happened when he didn't want to ask, answer questions. He was fined. So now you got Cam Newton. So he's going to be there. Cam Newton shows up. I have the transcript in front of me. I'm going to give you a quick snapshot of the transcript. So he's asked questions. Uh, no, nobody likes questions after they've lost. Okay. But again, you've enjoyed the spotlight all this time. You've used it for your gain. Now it's time to pay the piper. So he was asked about the, his message to the fans, Panther fans and supporters. He said simply, we'll be back. He was also asked on why the Panthers did not play the way they normally play. <laughs> the way they normally play. He was asked why they didn't play the way they normally play. And that's, uh, you, you, you can kind of term it as a dumb question, but a lot of times media folks are dumb. They hadn't played the game. They don't know, they don't know how to form a good uh, thought-provoking uh, game, uh, something that has to do with the game question. So he answered, they outplayed us. He didn't make excuses. He said they outplayed us, which we saw that happen. They did outplay us. Now, could he could have gone in more detail? Probably. But does he like the media? Doesn't seem like he does. Is he just mad? He didn't look mad moments ago when he was smiling, hugging, and congratulating Peyton Manning. That's class. He found the guy. He found his, his, uh, his brother in arms, you know, the, the, one of his fraternity members, as they refer to the NFL. He found that guy who was the winner and congratulated him, the legend, the great Peyton Manning. He found him, and in the series of photos, you see him smiling and having a conversation congratulating Peyton Manning. So he transitions to the, to the media room. Now he's angry. He was asked what Coach Rivera said in the locker room. He said he told us a lot of things. Now, a lot of times guys don't say exactly what the coach said in the locker room. I mean, that was the emotional situation. I'm sure Rivera had some emotional things to say. He probably told the guys he loved them and all that. Can we get some better questions? But, but, but he said he told us a lot of things. That's not an unusual answer in that situation. He asked if Denver did anything differently on defense. Now, that's a good question. Props to whoever asked that question. That's a good question question did you see anything differently on defense did they do anything different now you might not like the answer but he said nothing different so what he's saying is they just beat us straight up they didn't try any tricks they didn't do anything we didn't expect they beat us so he said nothing different okay good answer not what the media wants though okay so now he says if you can put your disappointment into words (laughs) you can put your disappointment into words this guy was just punched in the mouth repeatedly by the number one defense in the National Football League. And he said, the reporter says, can he put his uh, disappointment into words? He said, we lost. That was probably a nice, safe answer. I'm going to give Cam props for that because I don't know what I might have said if someone asked me to put my disappointment into words. I wouldn't even know how to do that at that moment. Today, maybe, I wouldn't know how to do that. Tomorrow, maybe, a week from now, maybe. In that moment right after the game, I couldn't. He said, we lost. They asked if Denver changed anything to take away the Panthers' running lanes. He said no, simply no. No. Now, that's not enough for the media. I understand that. This is the biggest game of the year, but this is what you got. And this is a lot more than I've seen other people give in the past when they were angry and they were upset. I've seen a guy sit there and not say anything for the entirety of the the press conference, and he got rich off of it. He's making money with Skittles and, and... and I'm just here so I won't be fine commercials. So, hey, it, it's happened before. This is not unprecedented. It just happened. And he gave you way more than that guy gave you. And this guy's disappointed, crushed, and all those things. Not to mention, I saw some audio later of the other team. And I don't know who coordinates this. But you can actually hear the other team being interviewed. And they're talking about all the things they did. Not, so, I'm sure that was frustrating. I don't know how he could hear himself or hear the, 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 the interviewer's questions. When you have another press conference going on adjacent to yours, that's just, that's just ignorant. That's just dumb. It's just ill-placed. I can't, I, I can't for the life of me understand why that's happening like that. Anyway, Cam brought this upon himself. Should have stood there, answered the questions like a man, like a person who enjoyed the spotlight for the entirety of the season. 
Now, again, I don't want him to be fake or phony or anything like that. So if that's how he was feeling in the moment, I'm okay with that. But you can't be shocked that you're catching heat for not speaking in the fashion that they wanted you to speak. Now, I'm, I'm not going to allow, and I'll talk about that in a second, the extreme <laughs> and gross hyperbole, the, just, just horrible, horrible characterizations and, 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 and name calling, all these things that, that were made as a result of this. I, I'll address that. But I, I want to talk about Cam's responsibility in doing his job. When you, when you enjoy it, it's you got to pay the piper, man. You got to pay the piper. You have to be a professional. Step up to the mic and answer those questions. Now, how you answer them, I'm okay with that. Lengthwise and all that, you're upset. I don't think he likes the media. He's not the first person that, that, that had a dislike for the media. People consider me in the media, and I dislike the media. Because I've been around them enough to know that their, their agendas aren't always pure. They aren't always as innocent as a fan who wants to know what happened. They're trying to get at you. They're trying to tug at you. They're trying to jab you. They're trying to make you get emotional. They're trying to make you say something you're going to regret. I don't like that. Your job is to report the news, to get the information, find out what happened for people that didn't see the game. That's what your job is. But too many, far too many of them have ulterior motives and they're trying to trap you. They're trying to get you caught up and and which in turn kind of gets you into trouble, gets you into these situations. So guys have these, these feelings about the media ahead of time and that prohibits the media from doing their job but guess what the media did their job because they got him to respond the way he did respond so it falls on him but i'm merely trying to get you to understand why he may have this cynicism towards the media why he feels this way towards the media again i'm in the media allegedly and i feel that way about those guys because i i've been there somewhat either secondhand or, or watching my teammates or, or watching my team or watching kids that I've coached or worked with deal with it and having conversations with them. I know how they feel. And that may be the root of Cam's attitude towards the media because just minutes before, he was laughing up, smiling, congratulating Peyton Manning, biggest smile in the world like he's had all season. But then he walked and it was time to face the piper, to face that music. He didn't do very well. So I'm, I'm putting it on him. Because he embraced the spotlight and then he tried to shrink from it when it when it mattered most. So I'm going to give him his due, but I'm going to address. I'm going to address the ridiculousness of the media after the fact. I'm going to go to a break and we'll talk about that next. 